Welcome to section 2, building a virtual die with C++. In this video we're going to take a look at how to set up your first C++ project. So the course comes with code that I have written along with CMake code to set up the various projects. So in this video I'm going to show you how to set that up in CMake, how to open the project in Visual Studio, how to run your code, and the basics of debugging. Now before we take a look at CMake, I want to go over some basic structure of the code and the two possibilities that you'll see throughout this course because it's important in know, understanding this in order to use CMake properly. So as a basic structure what I do is that I have a base project name folder. Under that I'll have an include directory and a source directory. So the include directory will have only header files or files that end or have a file extension of .h and then the source directory will have the actual source code and those will end with cpp so when you run cmake cmake is looking for a file called the cmake lists and that is what you see under the basic structure the cmake lists.txt so as you'll see with cmake you're going to have to enter in the source directory so this source directory has to be the base project directory that contains a cmake lists.txt file it has to have that file, otherwise CMake will complain and yell at you. Now an alternative structure that you should be aware of and that I also use frequently is you have a base project name folder. Under that you have two subdirectories along with the CMake list.txt and each subproject has its own included source file and its own CMake list.txt file. So for the basic structure on the left, the source directory is project name and it's also the same folder for the alternative structure. So in CMake you would enter project name when configuring this two directory structures. Now let me show you what I mean in CMake. Okay, so here I am in CMake now. So the first thing that it asks you is where is the source code? So like I stated, this is the directory that contains a CMake list.txt file. And for me, this is this directory. So I have a directory where I put all my code. Then I have a directory for the particular project. And then I have a separate directory just for the source. Now the reason I do this is because when I set where to build the project, so this is where all the binaries will be built, including the executables that we will be running when running our code, is I do that so I can create a build folder. So this way I have a central folder for this project, but my source is completely separate from my build. And this is sort of the point of CMake, especially with C++. You want to separate your source code from your build. So this is what I'll be doing. And once you have these two directories set, you'll come down to the bottom left and hit configure. And then this window will pop up. So here it's asking me to specify the generator for this project. Now this means what are you going to use for this project? What IDE or compiler or whatever are you going to use? And if I hit the drop down, you see that there are many, many options for what you can use with CMake. But as stated at the outset of this course, I will be using Visual Studio 2017, the 64 bit edition. So I'll select that and then I'll leave this as default. And we don't need to input any optional tool sets. Then I'll click finish. Now CMake is going to go through some checks to make sure that the compiler is actually working properly. And once it's done that, it'll say configuring, configuring done. Then to actually generate the project, we hit generate. And what this does is it generates the actual files that will be used by Visual Studio. So now there's actually something to open in the IDE. Additionally, something else you'll notice is here we ha now have a bunch of variables in our CMake window. Now these are all variables that are used internally to CMake and this allows you to change different settings for your build. Now CMake is smart and it knows some default flags to use for Visual Studio and so it has automatically populated these and it also gets information back from the compiler when it's doing its checks. So there's nothing you need to change in these variables, but just something you need to be aware of. So now that we've generated our project, we can just hit open project. 
and this will open the project in Visual Studio. So now I have the project open in Visual Studio. So on the left, you'll see the projects that are open. Well, the main solution is C++ by example, and then the main project that we have is basic syntax, which is what we covered in section one. So in order to run this project, you see that there's another project, and this is highlighted as bold. So the text is, all the text is white here, but this one is bold. So that means when we run our code, Visual Studio is going to try to run all build. And this is an automatic build target that CMake generates, but it's not actually the program that we want to run. So let's say we wanted to run the code from section one. So in order to set that up properly, you'll come to this project, right click it, and then you'll get a bunch of options, but what we're interested in is this one, set as startup project. So select that, and now you see that this project is in bold. So this means that when you run your code through Visual Studio, that Visual Studio is going to run this basic syntax project. So it's gonna build this project, and since this builds to an executable, it's then gonna run the executable. Now, up at the top, you see the configurations that you can build in. So debug, minimum size release, release, release with debug information. The two main ones that we'll be using for this course is debug and release. But to start out with, we'll be building exclusively in debug mode. Now let's take a look at some basics of debugging. So let's say you want to debug what's going on in some lines of code. You want to step through it step by step. That's usually the basic way that you debug. You know something is wrong in some area of code, but you don't know what exactly is happening. So you want to go through each line of code and see what the program is doing as it's executing each line. And that way you can hopefully identify the issue. So the way that you do this in Visual Studio is through breakpoints is what they're called. So here, so you see all the lines are numbered. If I click here, it'll add this red circle. So this indicates that I want a breakpoint on line nine of this main function. So when the debugger hits line nine, it's going to stop execution and then hand over the controls to me to allow me to step through each line of code. So now that I have this breakpoint, let's try and do that. So to run the actual project, you have this play button up here. And it says local Windows debugger because it's going to attach the debugger when it runs our code since we're building in debug mode. So if I click this, it's going to ask me, do I want to build these projects? I'm going to say yes. And then it's going to go through the process of compiling our code. Now it's generated the executable and the executable is now running. So now we can step through the code. So as you see now, there's an arrow indicating that we're at this breakpoint. So the executable is not actively going through the code and exiting. So it's stopped here, and now we can go through each line. So to step through a single line, the keyboard shortcut is F10, but that's also in the debug menu and that's called step over. So you're stepping over a line. So if I do that, I can step over each individual line and I can do this pretty quickly and it'll go through the entire section of code. It'll even go through the for loop. As you see, we're going through the different loops and then it'll continue until it reaches the end of the function. Now, let's say we want to skip all of this section. We can actually add breakpoints while we're executing code. So I'm going to do that now. And then I'm going to hit continue. So what continue does is that it continues code execution until you hit the next breakpoint.
And that comes in handy when you know you want to skip a certain chunk of code because you know the bug is not in there. This is also in the debug menu here under continue and the keyboard shortcut for that is F5. So I'm going to go ahead and hit continue and now we're on this line. So this line is actually a function. Now with functions you can step into them. So instead of stepping over, let's say you want to go inside the function and go through that function line by line as well. Now Visual Studio allows you to do that with the step into command or F11. So if I do that, it's going to try to go through into that function, but we don't have the debug code for that. So now the program is just going to exit. And now it's at return zero and the program exits. So let's write a small bit of code to demonstrate the step into functionality. So if I make a small function called print hello, and we just do what the function sounds like, print hello, we can then call this function here. And actually, let's move it down a bit. We can do that. So now if we run again, the debugger is going to attach, and then now we're at the first line, and we see that we can now step into, and now it's taken me into this function. And now I could execute each line, line by line, in this function. And then it continues execution in the function that you entered from. So it goes back up a step once print hello returns and finishes all the code that it has in it. And then we can proceed as we did in the last example. So that's the basics of debugging and how to run your code in Visual Studio.